and here we are heating up a pan gonna warm it up to a nice medium heat before we pour about two tablespoons of olive oil in it maybe one tablespoon and get it started what we're doing here is searing a nice piece of top round I cut off the end piece after slicing up the rest of the strips and I'm going to show you how to make a nice good sear on a steak when you're working with it in the pan. Now we got the pan heating up. I'm going to pour a little bit of that olive oil in there looking at about two tablespoons. No, that's about one and a half actually. So we're going to let that heat. And one of the great ways that you can tell if a pan is heating up properly is by how the oil moves around the pan. And you see as it gets hotter it actually moves easier and it doesn't streak up quite as much along the way. When it's all nice and cool, the oil doesn't like to move. They call that viscosity. But as it heats up, it starts to spread a lot easier and roll around the pan more. And we're going to put it down, give it a nice blast on the heat, let it warm up real quick just before the smoke point. Now with olive oil, you got to look out because the smoke point is actually lower than most other oils. And that's because olive oil in and of itself is a pretty light oil. So you look for it and you see right when you start to smell it, that's when you put it on. That way you don't burn the oil at all because that releases awesome stuff called free radicals and apparently that's not too good for your system, so they say. But you get a nice sear started, nice sizzle going. You're going to let it heat up and now that the steak is in there, it's going to absorb a lot of the heat so the olive oil is not really going to burn. Move it around a little, make sure that oil keeps moving and then you're going to let it cook for a second. What I'm going to do during that time is throw a little bit of fine sea salt on there. And fine sea salt is great because, well, it's got lower sodium content than rock salt, and its flavor is quite amazing. And that particular brand is from Italy, and I like it, Sicily to be certain. Now we're going to give that another half a second. At this point, you can start to smell the steak and the fat starting to come up a little bit in the odor of the meat with the olive oil. Just brown around. And we're going to flip it in just a second, and you can see the colors start to take place on the other side. Now we'll take this, and normally I'll do a pan flip, but today I just want you to see as we drop it in. You see that nice browning that goes around there? That is how the searing is done. Now you move it around again, because you got the other side, it's not entirely hot. And you want to spread the heat around so that it's not popping oil everywhere. That'll help you in clean up afterwards, because olive oil does tend to like the spray and at this point I'm going to lower the heat a touch because it's looking like it's about as hot as I want it to get and with the clean as you go principle take a wipe around the pan that'll save you a lot of trouble later when you're trying to clean up because the oil is better to clean up when it's warm I turn the heat down to a medium low at this point maybe a medium and I'm going to cook it for about two minutes move it around the pan so that way when I press it, it's one of the ways it's held done this. I like my steak to be cooked nice and medium with a good pink center. And I find that by doing it like this, you get it done just right. And if you want it well done, you can always cook it for just a little bit longer. And I'm going to use that and move it around. Just make sure you have a good, nice, tight wrist and use the whole arm as you're moving stuff around the pan. That way you don't go strand a muscle or anything. Now we can see the juice is starting to come out a bit out of the middle. That's another good way to tell how done it's done. I'm going to give it another 30 seconds or so. Maybe even another flip right here. There we go. And now, what I like to put on last, just because it makes it taste awesome, I turn it down to a low heat when I do this. But I grab that magic ingredient mentioned earlier. Just a teaspoon of a little potent fish sauce. This stuff is pretty gnarly, so you want to use it sparingly. There we go. Let it cook off. It's going to sit a little bit. And do this thing. It's also going to create a wicked sauce. And it's going to be kind of pungent in the smell when it burns off. So watch your nostrils. It might flare a tad. But after it's all said and done, the sauce that's made with it is pretty epic. And now we're going to let that cook for 30 seconds. I basically do this on the edge of the heat now. That way you can focus it all in one place and let the sauce reduce down to where you want it. This is great to serve with like a piece of sourdough bread or a nice thick roll. 
And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Well, actually, not there we go. There is one little extra you could do to it. There's this thing right here called a calamansi lime or lemon. It's called a calamansi citrus. You squeeze it on, and that that's going to cut that fish sauce because you're going to say, wow, that fish sauce has got a pungent flavor. But once you put the calamansi on it, you're good to go. I'm going to shut that off, move it around, and that is an amazing way to cook a bit of steak. Bon appetit.